Hello, my name is Lawrence, and today I'll be presenting on the work I did with Dan, Veronica, and Sean titled User Defined Swarm Robot Control. Robots are increasingly being deployed in large quantities across personal, commercial, and industrial sectors. Its application ranges from transportation to parcel sorting to firefighting. Fleets of robots are especially effective in tasks that require a distributed network or collective effort to combat difficult tasks. And so we're moving towards a society where people will often encounter and will need to interact, collaborate, or supervise swarms of robots. In such society, one important question that needs to be addressed is how do we interact with the robots? One challenge that arises with a swarm of robots is that it's unclear how to best command so many robots in situ. While one could command each robot individually, that is a very inefficient method, and so how can we enable users to effectively command a swarm of robots? Prior work in control of multi-robot systems have mostly explored uh, leverage gesture. So researchers have used EMG and IMU sensors to detect muscle signals and acceleration of users' forearm to derive a set of hand gestures that could be used to command multi-robot systems. Computer vision also has been used to detect whole body posture to control multi-robot systems. However, one problem with both of these is that the resulting command sets are somewhat arbitrary and are not very intuitive. And this is because they're primarily based on the limitations of the sensor, rather than really taking into account how users na would naturally interact. And so instead of choosing the sensor first and then figure out, figure out the set of input that the sensor can distinguish, we decide to flip this process around and first focus, find, focus on finding this user-defined set of inputs for multi-robot systems. To do this, we conducted an elicitation study. Elicitation studies have been used in both HCI and HRI fields. For applications like surface computing and human-drone interaction, researchers were able to compile an interaction set that is intuitive to users. And research has shown that gestures authored by more people, regardless of whether they are researchers or participants, were preferred to those authored by fewer people. And so in our case, uh, we use this elicitation study to answer the following research questions. First, how do users prefer to command a swarm of robots? Is it actually different from expert-defined or sensor-based command set? And what types of modality do people use for different commands? Another question that emerges for multi-robot systems is how does the number of robots affect this? Literature and HRI have shown that people's perception change based on how many robots they interact with. And so what is its effect on how people command? Lastly, what role does proximity have in how people command robots? Uh, again, literature from HRI have shown that proximity to the ro robots affect how humans perceive uh, them. To answer these questions, um, we ran an elicitation study with the following independent variables. For number of robots, we had 1, 5, or 20 robots. And for proximity zones, we either use intimate or personal. And we also compiled a set of commands for multi-robot systems from prior literature. Broadly, there are four categories. Uh, first is robot selection, where users are asked to select different number of robots. Second is inter-robot interaction, where participants have to command the relationship between these robots. So for example, uh, for split and merge task, participants had to either split up a group to two, into two groups or merge them into one. Another category is user-robot interaction, where the user is either tries to get attention of the robot or decides on the spatial relationship between the robot and the user. And lastly, there is robot-environment interaction. Here, participants either decide how the robots navigate in the environment or the speed at which they navigate. They also command robots to manipulate objects in the environment. For example, you can, they ask them to grab an object. To run the study, we had the following setup. A TV monitor displayed a pictorial prompt, and robots were placed on a table with the user standing next to them. 
for the robots, we used Soy's platform from Lukag et al, as they are small enough to allow manipulation of many robots with one hand and also fast enough to support real-time interaction. The study procedure was as follows. First, we showed the participants a pictorial flashcard containing the initial and final state of the robots. We then asked them to perform whatever action they think is appropriate to command the robots to go from the initial to the final state. We told them there were no constraints. And we used a Wizard of Oz study design where the study operator um, initiated the robot behaviors in response to the participant action. After each trial, we asked the participants to recall and explain their actions to get a better understanding of what they did and why they did it. So we look at the results for the first question. Um, so we compiled a user-defined interaction set by combining responses from the users. Some of them are shown here. So to command a robot to move to a specific point, participants point it at the desired goal location. When there are many robots, participants physically move one of them towards the goal target. To get attention of the robots, participants either wave at them or snap their finger. So combining all of these, uh, we generate a comprehensive set, and the interaction with the highest agreements are shown here. For instance, to merge or split a group of robots, participants use their two hands to either virtually push together the robots or separate the robots. As seen from the previous video, to command a single robot to move to a specific point, users were most likely to point at the goal location. When controlling the speed of the robots, participants use a calming gesture with both of their hands. Finally, for a grab an object task, participants physically manipulated two of the robots and moved them toward the object, and expected the rest to follow. For the full interaction set, please refer to our paper. Here's a breakdown of modality across all the user-generated interaction. We found that gesture is the most common modality, and that supports prior work that have mostly leveraged gesture for multi-robot system control. However, the interaction set is still multimodal in that a significant portion is still uh, uses touch or verbal communication. One interesting trend is that verbal commands were almost always accompanied by gesture. So even for participants whose primary modality was verbal, they still subconsciously use gesture on their side to complement their verbal command. The second question we had was on the number of robots and its effect. So we did observe on significant effects in that um, for similar, even for simil similar tasks, participants use different number of hands based on how many robots they interact with. And this effect was significant for both gesture as well as touch interactions. For gesture, we saw an increase in two-handed gesture when, the, when there were more robots and decrease in use of one or two fingers. Similar trends were observed for touch interaction as well. Just to clarify, one or two finger gesture or touch interaction refer to instances where users either point with their finger or grab a robot with uh, two fingers. And these types of interaction occurred abundantly and thus we labeled them in a separate category than uh, one-handed interaction. And regarding to regard to the effects of number of robots, Participants like P5 commented after a study that I often wanted to use both hands when interacting with a group of robots, even though I knew already a single hand could work the same. We also saw an effect of number of robots on how users control many robots through touch. With more robots, instead of trying to use directly touch all of the robots like done here, participants were more likely to use a different strategy where they only control a subset of the robots, like, like here, or only just one of the robots and expected the rest to follow. And so for touch interactions, we observed this shift in control paradigm as the number of robots has increased. Instead of trying to control all of the robots, participants were more likely to only control a subset of them and expected the rest to follow. Participants like P2 noted that when there were too many, too many, I wasn't sure how to grab them all, so it led me to think other ways to direct them. 
Lastly, we look at the effects of proximity. Indeed, there was a significant effect of proximity. Um, in particular, we saw that proximity affected how many hands or fingers uh, people use for gesture. When robots were far away, people tended to use more one-handed gesture. And while we didn't investigate the exact reason behind this, we suspect it had to do with the fact that people tended to lean forward when the robots are further away, and it would have been unstable to use both hands while leaning forward. But further investigation will be needed to confirm this. And so from the elicitation study, we compiled the following design insights. First, the interaction vocabulary is dynamic and that it changes based on the state of the robots. And so a future solution must be able to recognize use of both arms or hands. You should also understand that users tend to touch only up to a limited number of robots. Second, the user-defined com command set is multimodal, but with an emphasis on gesture. And so an ideal interface should first focus on gesture recognition, but should still detect multimodal inputs as it would provide flexibility to users in different scenarios. And lastly, future interfaces should provide back-channeling responses. We observed numerous instances where participants were unsure if their commands were being properly, properly understood by the users. And so you can see them repeating their commands until they're satisfied. And so it's important to provide this feedback in real time to the user either by overlaying visual output through AR-like systems or through haptic feedback. There, were some limit, there are some limitations to our results as well. As we use a relatively small tabletop robots within a limited workspace, the results may not generalize to other significantly different systems. Um, additional studies will be needed to see if the trend is consistent across scale, different scale and size. We also observe instances where users fall back on their early or first commands, even when the parameter or task is significantly altered. A larger participant pool could help mitigate the effect of this legacy effect. During our study, participants were solely focused on the robots and the task. And so it will be interesting to see if the command set is different when the, robot, uh, when the user is uh, paying attention to some other task. Finally, uh, prior work has shown that culture background plays an important role. And so before deployment of any interface, it's important to investigate uh, the effect of different cultures. In conclusion, we're beginning to see teams of robots entering our daily lives. As these robots need to interact with not only developers, but also everyone else, it's important that these robots have this vocabulary that is accessible to everyone. Thank you for listening to my talk.